Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the Daily Office Lectionary. And today is our Founder's Day here at St. John's. It is Sunday. Hooray! We're joining together to gather for worship, to glorify God, to keep holy the Sabbath by worshiping Him and receiving Him in the Blessed Sacrament. Um, I thought today, rather than doing a lesson for morning or evening prayer, or even doing the Collect, I thought, why don't we take a look at a little bit about the history of the prayer book and the history of St. John's Church. Now, as for the prayer book, uh, the, the service we'll be using today uh, for 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock service will be from the 1789 Book of Common Prayer. This is the first American Book of Common Prayer. Remember that the Episcopal Church uh, is actually the Church of England in the United States. You know, you remember the story growing up as kids about the pilgrims who escaped religious persecution in England? Well, those those pilgrims were escaping the Church of England, uh, true religion and good and godly Bible-based religion as found in the Book of Common Prayer. Now, the prayer book that would have been used by the Church of England, because the Church of England followed very closely behind, and matter of fact, the, many of the colonies actually had established churches for a long time before the Revolution. Uh, Virginia, the Carolinas, uh, Georgia, all the Church of England was the official religion of those colonies, uh, Maryland eventually, uh, and whereas other places like the North New England colonies and, and Pennsylvania did not have official uh, established religions, but certainly had prominent, uh, predominant religions like the Baptists uh, or the Congregationalists. But the prayer book that would have been used in the churches of the Church of England here in the colonies uh, would have been the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. This was, in fact, and is the last approved Book of Common Prayer in the Church of England. And even to this day, uh, if you go to a church that says they use the Book of Common Prayer in the Church of England, they are using the 1662 prayer book. Now, they published an alternative service book, a book of alternative services in the 1980s, uh, which mirrors the book that was published here in the United States in the 79, basically, uh, with more modern languages. But unlike the United States, they uh, did not call the new liturgies the Book of Common Prayer because it doesn't continue in that same strain uh, and continuing ethos and theology of the Book of Common Prayer. From the beginning of 1549, the first Book of Common Prayer in England uh, through 1662. And then here in the United States, you know, the Church of England folks, as they were worshiping during the Revolutionary War, uh, they crossed out the prayer for the King of England and they placed the President of uh, Congressional Congress and then eventually the President of the United States. Uh, and so the prayer book was revised by the meeting of the various uh, colonies each formed a diocese. Eventually, we were able to get bishops. Uh, now that took some doing because the, church, the bishops of England didn't want to give us bishops because the bishops had to claim an oath of allegiance to the king. Couldn't do that here in the independent United States. Uh, but eventually, the Scottish church gave us bishops, and so London gave in and also made bishops for us as well. And as each diocese was formed, they met together in a convention. It's, the, it's always been bottom up that way. Uh, they met at a convention and formed the Episcopal Church of the United States, the Protestant Episcopal Church of the United States. States of America and approved a prayer book based on the 1662 uh, with a bit of a tweaking from the Scottish prayer book. The Scottish prayer book and the English prayer book had a big difference. The English prayer book followed the Western or the Catholic Roman Catholic tradition of having the invocation of the Holy Spirit, uh, known as the Epiclesis, before the words of institution. As Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood. The Scottish book follows the Eastern Orthodox pattern of having that epiclesis or that uh, invoking of the Holy Spirit after the dominical words. And so as a part of a, uh, an agreement with the Scottish to give us bishops originally, uh, we our prayer book has the epiclesis afterwards. But what you're going to find today at St. John's when you join us for worship uh, is uh, remarkably how close the 1789 prayer book and the 1928 prayer book, and there were two prayer books in the middle uh, between them, how close they are in form as well as theology. The theology is identical. The form is also very similar with a few tweakings, like the prayer of humble access is at the beginning of the Eucharistic canon, not right before we receive communion. The Lord's Prayer, beginning of the service, which is an option in the 28, and also after we receive communion rather than right before. So, But those are really the two logistical changes that will be no noticeable. Uh, other than that, for goodness sake, it is the same liturgy because it is the same Anglicanism, and it's why we continue to use the 1928 Book of Common Prayer here at St. John's Church, because we follow in that continuum. In 1858, when they met at Henry Porter Baldo's house, across the street where the freeway is now, I-75, that was his house. And he bought this apple orchard already, had a church and a chapel designed, and in three weeks' time had all the money on deposit to build the chapel. Two years later, they were worshiping in the big church. 
And today we celebrate and give thanks for all those who made such sacrifices to get this church way out in the country. It's hard to imagine this being the countryside, but way out in the country to be a parish of the Diocese of Michigan. So it is very exciting that we get a chance to celebrate that and give thanks to Almighty God for all of these years of worship. So 7.30 morning prayer, 8 o'clock Holy Communion, 10 o'clock Holy Communion, 5.30 evening prayer with the opportunity to receive communion uh, as well. And I do hope that we will see you in church and may God bless you.